why are you hanging out with that kid? He's going to end up in jail or worse. Those were the words that my high school teacher told me when he saw me talking to a kid in a lower level math class. And those words haunted me, making me wonder, what made me seem so different from that other student in my teacher's eyes? And words were not the only things that separated us. My school had a policy where students had different colored ID cards based on their scores on the standardized test. Those like me or others who passed all parts of the test and did better than pass in some cases were given gold or platinum IDs and usually were in the advanced mathematics classes. However, those who failed at least one exam were given white ID cards and usually in the basic level math classes. And these differences were also shown in what you saw when you walked into our classrooms with those in the basic level math classes sitting there doing worksheets quietly, while me and my peers in the advanced mathematics classes were given collaborative, fun, and challenging group activities. My name is Christian Adoswan, and I'm a scholar who studies education opportunity gaps. When I say opportunity gaps, I mean the differences in the resources and the opportunities that students have in schools. Education is what prepares students to become better and support our society, becoming people capable of holding up our world. However, opportunity gaps can stop them from having that capability. When I went to graduate school and began researching some of the issues that concerned me as a student and a teacher, I discovered there was a wide body of research looking at educational opportunity gaps in mathematics Usually, these focused on different levels of coursework, such as advanced, honors, on-level, or basic, with one report finding that 75% of mathematics students were grouped in some way into these different levels of coursework. I coined the term opportunity stratification to discuss the different levels of opportunities that students have based on if they have access to those advanced courses or if they don't with the different types of opportunities, resources such as teaching, and just opportunities for what they can do that students get based on if they're in those advanced classes compared to if they are not in those advanced classes. Many of the research looking at this focuses on math, including four of my previously published studies. And we know that there can be some pretty negative effects for how students are grouped and the opportunities available to them. So today, I will first discuss the different issues caused by opportunity stratification, especially for the students who are at the bottom, before second, discussing some potential solutions so that we can close those opportunity gaps so that our students can help hold up our world. As someone with a platinum colored ID, I was given multiple opportunities. At one point, they even bussed us to the rodeo so we could see Beyonce. And when they saw us in the hallways, principals and teachers both treat us completely different than those of my peers who were wearing white ID cards. In the same way that I benefited from opportunity stratification, those at the bottom suffer from three main issues. First, lower quality instruction and less qualified teachers. Second, lower test scores. And third, lowered educational attainment. First, there is abundance of research telling us that students who are in those lower level classes often have teachers who are less experienced and hold lower expectations. One study found that 80% of teachers in one state were grouped so that most of the higher, more experienced teachers were placed in the advanced classes. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics in 2018 put out a statement calling for the stop of this thing and more fairly distributing teachers. The issue is when you have the less experienced teachers teaching these lower level classes, they often can set lower expectations for students because they don't have the experience needed to set high expectations and make sure that teacher students can meet them. This creates kind of what is called a Pygmalion effect or what some in the research call a self-fulfilling prophecy 
where students reach up to the level of high expectations if teachers hold high expectations for them and drop down to meet lower expectations if teachers set low expectations for them. This leads to issues such as teachers setting those lower expectations and having rules and procedures and guidelines in their class that not only set lower expectations for students, but give them less support to meet their educational goals. And this has serious effects for the outcomes of these students. We know that there is a test score gap, what some call an achievement gap in education. This gap is caused by differences in test scores by students from low-income families compared to those in higher-income families, black students compared to white students, and English language learner students compared to native English-speaking students. To give a little background on what I mean when I say that these test scores are different, I'll start by giving an example of what I mean when I say advanced mathematics and the opportunity gap. In middle school, students who have access to Algebra 1, which I will refer to as early algebra, are often the only ones who are able to get to the highest level of mathematics in high school. However, there is a large body of research that tells us that often those students who are from low-income classes never reach those highest level of mathematics because teachers are less likely to recommend both students from low-income households as well as black students and English language learner students to those higher levels of mathematics with most of the higher level mathematics in high school being completely dominated, over 70% from students from families that have high incomes. And this is even when you control for their test scores and prior achievement in school. Yet we know that students who take this early algebra tend to make higher on standardized tests. Not only do they make higher on standardized tests, when districts expand access to early algebra, they see their test scores increase. These two things, the fact that many of the students who are closed off from these higher level classes tend to score less on the test, and that when districts expand access, their scores go up as a whole, have led many scholars to believe that this difference in opportunity to take advanced classes is also linked to the test score gap between different groups of students. And there are real and long lasting consequences to that gap which brings us to our third negative effect, lowered educational attainment. A wide body of research tells us that students that take more math in high school are more likely to graduate from high school, more likely to enroll in college, and also when they get to college, more likely to persist, last, and graduate. Multiple scholars such as Musoba have found that when these students take more advanced math in high school, they're more prepared for college and less likely to have to take classes that don't count for their degree because they can jump right into taking their required mathematics classes. This leads to these students being a leg up with her finding that especially for black and Latino students, taking extra math in high school was one of the top predictors of them graduating from college, meaning that students who don't have access to those opportunities suffer when it comes to their college outcomes. But not only are they more likely to graduate from high school and college, they make more money. Multiple scholars, ranging from studies in 2004 to 2020, found that each extra math class that a student takes in high school leads to higher lifetime earnings. In addition to that, they found that for women, there was actually a protective effect with girls who took mathematics and higher levels in high school being less likely to experience teen pregnancy or drop out of school. And one study even found that they were less likely to depend on welfare if they took more math in high school, implying that students who took those math opportunities were more likely to end up financially stable. Eventually, it was discovered that these different colored ID cards was actually illegal. Having ID cards that show a student's score on the standardized test not only creates a difference of opportunities for the students, but also was found not to increase test scores and to provide way too much information about how students did on the test. Yet, this was only discovered when parents found out what was happening and spoke out to policymakers and legal experts, with many experts being horrified that this was ever allowed in the first place. In the same way, there are three solutions on the state 
school, and teacher level to help close these opportunity gaps. First, some states have started a policy called automatic enrollment in advanced math courses. What this policy does is that students who make in the top 40% of their math exam in fifth grade are automatically placed in advanced math in sixth grade. The reason why this works is because there's research that tells us that lower income schools are less likely to offer these classes. And by passing laws that require them to offer these classes, states have to expand access and make sure that middle schools offer these classes. It also means that there's less bias in the way that students are recommended, and so all students who are capable of being successful in these advanced classes are placed in them. We've seen that this already has positive effects with Dallas, for example, in 2023, doubling the amount of middle schoolers enrolled in advanced algebra classes with students from low-income families, black students and Latino students being far more likely to take these advanced classes after these policies were enacted. Second, on the school level, schools can both increase access to these advanced classes and be more fair with how they assign teachers. By offering extra support for students to take these advanced classes, which can be done in multiple ways, such as having double-dose algebra where students take an extra class that has been found to be effective, or also making sure that students are prepared in ninth or 10th grade to take those in more advanced classes in 10th and 11th grade. But in addition to those strategies which have been found to be effective, as Education Week in 2020 points out, stop giving all the lower level math classes to lowest experienced teachers. My mentor used to call this sharing the love, as despite her large body of experience, she would volunteer to teach less advanced classes. And I did the same thing in my experience. If there was only one first year teacher available to teach those lower level classes, I would offer to teach them instead. And principals that take this into consideration can follow the recommendations of the National Council for Teachers of Mathematics to make sure that they are fair in distributing that experience to the students who need it the most in those lower level classes. And finally, on the teacher level, schools need to provide more support for teachers to set those high expectations for students, no matter what level of coursework they're in. This can be done with evaluations that take this into consideration, as well as making sure that teachers have help and collaboration to use these higher quality instructional opportunities with lower level students. As an example of this, I currently am teaching pre-service teachers, and in each class I make sure they know about these opportunity gaps and they know about what these expectations look like. Almost every student completely understands what I mean when I say that there are differences in treatment and teaching for the students in the advanced versus the non-advanced classes. And by making them realize what's behind that and what the effects are, we can prepare a future generation of teachers that knows how to better and more equitably teach students. Now that we have discussed some of the solutions on the school, state, and teacher level, we can get back to the fact that we can all make a difference in what's happening. When we see that there are these gaps and opportunities, we also can see that we are holding our future generation back from being able to sexually take advantage of opportunities and hold up our world. Each individual person can do something pretty simple to help students reach their mathematics potential. Tell people about this. Rosek and colleagues did multiple interventions from 2015 to 2017 where they just told parents, here's a brochure. Here's all the benefits and values of taking extra math classes for your students higher salaries, better college, college graduations. Look at all these benefits. And just by sending that brochure and letting parents know, the students were more likely to take one entire math class. As we stated before, just that one extra math class in high school can lead to better money, better college outcomes, and have outlasting effects on the opportunities that students get and the outcomes they have. And so it behooves all of us to make sure we share this information with those close to us, as well as with policymakers and anyone we know has the capability of making a difference. Because it is only by doing that and making sure that we allow all students to have equal opportunities in mathematics education that we can ensure that all students can hold up our world.